right. Well, I am here with Binoy Tamang, one of my favorite entrepreneurs and business owners. And we're going to be talking a little bit about your experience with these small businesses, these startups, and how you've seen that impact with human capital. And I guess my burning question is when, at what point does it make sense to start engaging the human capital strategy when it comes to starting a business? Great question. And I've gone through this so many times. I go, Ooh. in fact, I always say, if it weren't for people, business would be easy. Right? <laughs> oh. So invariably, whenever you're starting a business, you're scrappy, you're trying to do everything you can to kind of conserve costs, prove the model, make sure it works. But as soon as you have almost like 25, 30 people, then your hair is on fire. Mm -hmm. You're trying to put out all of these personnel issues. I call it the snotty nose issue, right? <laughs> and I will tell you that by the time you get to 50, you're starting to have needs that structure, provide structure, provide all of the onboarding issues and clarifying all of the paperwork. Mm -hmm. But without a doubt, if you're anywhere near 100, you are toast if you don't have a senior HR professional on your executive staff. I'm saying executive staff, mm -hmm. not just somebody on board, somebody who absolutely understands a big picture. And again, it also depends on the trajectory. If it's a slow moving kind of a lifestyle business, eh, yeah, you can, you can even outsource some of that. Mm -hmm. But if you're on a fast trajectory, you need to have strategic planning come into play, not just the minutia of making sure a compliance is taken care of and you've got all of your onboarding sequences taken care of, right? Yeah. And all of the benefits, those are required trappings. Yeah. But it becomes more important based on the speed and the size of the company's growth. Okay. So you use the term executive HR, strategic HR. For our audience, I mean, primarily we, we talk to a lot of HR professionals. We sure. talk to a lot of uh, executives and CEOs as well. Uh -huh. What does strategic and executive, like what's the separation for you? What conversations are happening there? Well, that's a great question. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I learned this from an, a, a VP of HR. He's, he's been a fantastic uh, enabler for me. There's some, some components uh, that distinguish normal HR transactional with strategic. Let me, let me see if I can bring this out. We're talking about someone who can uh, has a seat on the management table and who not only does the fundamentals of compliance, analytics, uh, even um, technology integration, right? Mm -hmm. These are kind of enablers to make sure that the company is able to function and move forward. Right. You've got to make sure you're compliant. But then you've got to have the strategic look to make sure that you've got uh, cultural issues addressed, mm -hmm. right? Human capital at a level of, are you getting the right uh, uh, assortment and the right quality and caliber of people coming? And even things like um, reward systems and, and the capability to make sure that the systematic prog uh, progression of talent is all dialed in. We're also talking about ele elements like making sure that you're looking at um, the uh, it's so, sort of a, a, a very difficult concept of almost being a, a representative of the people, <laughs> even though you're up on the executive staff, sure. right? You're like you're, the people advocate. Yeah, right? You have to have the ombudsman kind of a, uh, a role at the same time. And then you've got, of, of course, you've got to be the strategic visionary. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you've got the person who has to do all the balancing <laughs> act of eight, nine different roles. Yeah. That's a very different ask than to say, mm, let's go get a uh, PEO and let's see if they can take care of our mm -hmm. uh, payroll and our distributions and our benefits, right? Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference when you look at all those elements. That's not somebody who's junior. Sure. Well, okay, so to dovetail on that topic, um, m me personally, I have a, a big mission that I've been a big proponent of uh, this trend that we're starting to see where there's a bit of a separation uh, you know, in the 80s, it was personnel, and today we're HR, and tomorrow, we don't know what the word is yet. There's a lot of buzzwords. Um, but we certainly have seen this trend of shift of HR operations being a lot of that tactical, what you mentioned. There's still some strategy involved mm -hmm. when aligning. But then there's this new wave of more of the talent scope, 
of HR. Mm -hmm. So these would be things like the recruiting strategies, uh, retention strategies, mm -hmm. um, and some of those other elements that are related to the people and training succession mm -hmm. planning. So with these smaller companies, and especially where that is a space that you work so predominantly, does it, do you think that it would make sense to invest money in maybe hiring a PEO or outsourcing some of those more tactical items and engaging and investing in a higher salary of somebody that comes in and is really looking at your people? Because that's your biggest collateral, or not collateral, but uh, asset, asset yeah. in your business is your people. So curious what your thoughts would be on that. I love that idea. <laughs> I, I love the idea because you just gave me another tool for my next venture, right? On how to be very systematic and strategic in the, in, in the money cash flow. You just gave me a great idea. Have all the minutia outsourced, right? Mm -hmm. For all of the typical onboarding and paperwork. But what you just told me was, that's a great idea. Why not have any of the future um, planning, uh, resource management, um, uh, human capital strategy be in-house or even outsourced to a specialist who can take care of that mm -hmm. so that I'm almost allocating um, the, the vertical expertise mm -hmm. even within the HR um, arena. And just like I talked about eight or nine different roles, then compartmentalize those as well. Yeah. If I could get experts that could do that, Oh yeah, I would do that. That's yeah. a great idea. That's awesome. Well, it's hey, a great idea. Good. I'm, I'm glad we're having this talk then. Yeah. So next question would be, uh, as I talk to CEOs and other executives, it's interesting to me because a lot of C-suite people know that they want a strategic HR mind. They know they want yeah. somebody that can think at that higher level. But a lot of executives, and especially scrappy entrepreneurs and startups, don't even really know what to ask for or what to mm. expect. They know they need somebody that's not just, you know, shifting paperwork and processing payroll, not to discount that, like you said, compliance, those things are important, but they know they need somebody that is capable of more. So how do you think we can make the connection between a really strategic minded HR person that can bring that level of talent, but is accustomed to waiting to be told for that direction, you know, waiting for the information to come from, um, bridge that gap between the executive that knows they need something but don't really know how to ask for. How do we connect the dots there to really elevate this strategic executive HR presence? I've got the answer for okay, you. It great. just happened a couple of weeks ago. I have a wonderful, talented friend who is running a super high growth company in Irvine, California. And we had this fantastic discussion. In that discussion, we were talking about the three year strategic plan revenue goals, product development, and all of that. He's growing so fast that he doesn't even have a VP of marketing, mm -hmm. right? And you would think, oh, we need that. But in this discussion, in this discussion, we were talking about the sequential steps required in very short order by quarter in order to reach those goals. Mm -hmm. And the big glaring hole was, how do we get the right talent to come on board? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, to, to uh, one end of that story was, that CEO said, oh my gosh, I've got to hire the VP of HR <laughs> ahead of marketing, <laughs> ahead of the CMO. And most CEOs are like, no, 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 I need no, marketing. No, <laughs> he got it. The light bulbs awesome. went off when he realized, Oh my goodness, not only do I have to, to prioritize the HR role, the strategic one there, ahead of marketing and, and some other roles, but it's going to allow me to make a plan that will ultimately hit every one of those KPIs because I'll have the right person in that seat. Mm -hmm. I'll have the right balance of talent, uh, even the balance between uh, EEO sanctioned minorities and representatives of this and that. He goes, I didn't even think about that. Mm. So the, the CEOs, the, the young business owners, the startups, the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs need to understand that it is entirely about people and that the planning for that has to happen as soon as they can, as soon as they can. Now, let me answer the other question you asked. So what about these strategic 
leaders in HR, sometimes they take a reactive role, right? Mm -hmm. They sort of sit back. Um, it's almost like saying, snap out of it, guys. <laughs> you have no idea how important you are. We hear all the talks about Elon Musk's automation this and robots that and whatever, right? In the end, you, uh, Miss or Mr. HR, you're so important because everyone screws up execution when it comes time for people interactions, when it comes time for compensation models, when it comes time to connect with the emotive side of raising the, the talent's capabilities and bringing it up. People just don't understand that. And it's, oh, I've got the right widget. Look at this widget, it's gonna win, right? And they screw it up. So if you could give them, uh, if we could say, rise up, you can do wonders, entrepreneurial CEO, you have no idea what you just said. You have got to focus on the trajectory based on human capital onboarding of the right type. And, I, and I, the end summary was to the CEO, and I think the HR talent would understand this. Imagine your business is so successful that you have a line of talented, super talented people waiting to come and join your team, and you actually have to say, sorry guys, I can only take two out of the thousand lined up. We are so hot. We are so culturally just, just absolutely ripping it up. Mm -hmm. You cannot come on board, but you have people talented waiting to come on board. That in and of itself is the strategy. That in, right? That's exactly right. But yeah. that's the, the symptom, the CEO, and said, what if that picture were to happen and he's just salivating? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that would be a dream. Because the people are what build the business ultimately. Correct. Correct. I love it. Yeah. Well, in wrapping up, I want to know uh, if you had just one great piece of advice, one little tidbit that as a CEO and a business owner that you could give to the HR community um, to inspire them, to elevate them, to help them be more successful, what would that piece of advice be? The best HR people that I've seen have an a learned or intuitive sense of business as well. Mm -hmm. If they can go into a boardroom, if they can talk to the CEO or talk to the CFO, and not only represent the people issues and all the tactical plans, but actually sit down and say, what? So in order to double sales, you're going to have to have an inordinate amount of pressure that's going to be uh, placed on the quality assurance development team mm -hmm. because they're going to have to have enough uh, assessment and proofing of the product because you can't get those sales un un unless the product is at a certain level of competence and meets the needs. And that, that VP, that HR person is able to traject uh, tra uh, see the trajectory and completely understand what the business ramifications are mm -hmm. and then be able to advise and say, well, that represents, you're going to have to have, if you're going to double sales, you're going to have to about 30% more in QA, about 25% uh, about more in development, <clears throat> and you're going to have to have these sorts of uh, impacts. And the bottom line impact is, let me, let me just do this for you. Oh, that's about, uh, ooh, I don't know, 40% more in labor costs, Mr. CFO, what do you think? Now, if you had, right? I love if, it. if you had a conversation like that, if you could bone up and prepare your business mind and not just represent, hey, I'm an expert on this, this is all I do, mm -hmm. but are able to translate the needs, anticipate, project, and quantify that, oh, would kiss you all over, mm -hmm. come on board, you're helping me. That's the value. That's where, and that's the advice I would recommend to any HR professional get in the business groove, understand the implications of those discussions, mm -hmm. and be able to quantify the value that you can provide. Fantastic. Binoy, thank you so much for spending time Thanks with us. Thanks for having me here. Hopefully You're we'll great. see you at our next event. Will do. All thank right. you. Thanks, Thanks. again.